In the day, Washington, D.C. was America's first city with a black majority population and many neighborhoods were predominantly black. Today, many of those same neighborhoods have experienced significant demographic shifts. Scholars have not explored how the changes in community diversity that accompany gentrification influence consumption activities. You displace all of the original long-established residents and then you don't have that cultural diversity. As far as diversity of actual residents, it's actually pretty limited, I would say, to um, middle-class white folks. When I first moved here, it was solidly African-American. Now there's a mix of people, and I think that's important. The newcomers maybe are not as interested in, in the old-timers, and vice versa. It leads to some trust issues. Diverse, but we're still separate. Open new store, new supermarket, uh, they call Whole Foods. Now they open a different restaurant, and before they have a restaurant. Does everybody have the same taste? No, those are middle class tastes. These differences in consumption norms and preferences are clearly a source of tension. Dog parks and coffee houses. Dog parks being created. The space that they were designed for human need has been turned into something for needs of dogs. But if you only follow the money, you are only going to, you're ultimately only going to cater to a culture that has money. So you say is revitalization good for cities? It depends.